Hi, and welcome back to JST. Today we talk Japanese language. The forward to this is that I'm not a linguist, I am not a graduate in a Japanese language, I'm just someone that studied this language for the past 10 years with all the difficulties and all the problems and all the effort that I put in it. So it's just like a, a small preview, a small taste of what Japanese language is. Just because I saw in this last few travels that people that go to Japan, even if they don't want to learn the language, they are interested in it. So a very, very brief intro to Japanese language. From the beginning, in Japan you have three or four writing systems. These are kanji, so the ideograms, hiragana, katakana and finally the romaji. So kanji are, of course, the, the drawings, let's say, the ideograms of Chinese origins that actually have a meaning behind. And then you have the two kana systems, and these are more like the phonetic alphabets, so they are uh, syllabaries, and uh, hiragana and katakana are the first two systems that you will learn when you start learning Japanese. And then you have the romaji, and the romaji is the uh, Latin alphabet, the Roman alphabet. So, of course, in a sentence, when you read Japanese, uh, you will mainly find the kanji, hiragana and katakana. And sometimes, when you have to introduce some company name or some numbers, then you will also have the romaji. So, as I was saying, the kanji are the true words. And with that, I want to say that if, for example, I want to say umbrella, Casa. Casa is a word that you can spell with hiragana, but that has a kanji which actually represents that word. I don't know if I'm being clear here, but kanji is the meaning. So, for example, again, umbrella or how. Basically, everything that is, is around us can be written with kanji. But when you begin the language, when you begin studying the language, you actually learn all these words only phonetically, so only with the kana system. And then you have the katakana, which for me was quite hard to learn, and I don't know why. It's a different kind of writing. I mean, it corresponds to the hiragana, so they are exactly the same phonetically speaking, but the writing is different. The katakana is used to translate in Japanese writing the foreigner uh, words. For example, if I am to write my name, Marianna, I will not use hiragana or kanji, I will use katakana. The same goes with a lot of loan words such, such as taxi, sandwich and switch and a lot of other Japanese words that are loans from English. So these are the four different writings. And for example, I will try and put some sentence here so that you can find the different and so you will have kanji, which usually are name or the radical of verbs, so the, uh, the core meaning of the phrase. And then you will have hiragana, which are usually employed to signal the particles, different elements of the word. So when you travel to Japan, you will find very different writings around. And you will find also, of course, different writing styles along with the different writing systems. But you will find all of these three elements together. So even if you don't read Japanese, you will find yourself surrounded with different type of symbols that won't mean anything to you, but they refer to different kind of meaning. And often when you visit Japan for the first time, you start by learning the first most important kanji for you. So for example, the kanji for the cities that you visit, such as Tokyo. Kyoto. So the, the, the places that you actually will visit and then you have to find on the maps then that's the first kanji that you find. And sometimes if you go around with Japanese people they will try and teach you something about the kanjis and how they learn the kanji and how this kanji originated. So this is clearly not the place to go deep inside the topic even because it's not my topic and I just found that for people that want to travel there sometimes it's quite interesting to know how Japanese think because the way you talk often shape the way you think and so the fact that you have four different writing systems and two different phonetic alphabets and one uh, kanji system it's very complicated for us and it shows that there is a very different how to say cultural approach to language so I thought it was interesting and 
may be fun. So let me know what you think and if you like the video thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and I talk to you soon. Thanks, bye! And often when you visit Japan for the first time, you start by learning the first most important kanji for you. So for example, the kanji for the cities that you visit, such as Tokyo, Kyoto. Um, maybe you will learn something about Nara, so the, the, the places that you actually will visit and then you have to find on the maps, then that's the first kanji that you find. And sometimes if you go around with Japanese people, they will try and teach you something about the kanjis and how they learn the kanji and how this kanji originated. So this is clearly uh, not the place to go deep inside the topic, even because it's not my topic. And I just found that for people that want to travel there, uh, there, sometimes it's quite interesting to know um, how Japanese think because, uh, as many knows, uh, the way you talk often shape the way you think. And so the fact that you have four different writing systems and two different phonetic alphabets and one uh, kanji system, it's very complicated for us and it shows that there is a very different, uh, how to say, um, cultural approach to language. Uh, so I thought it was interesting and maybe fun. So let me know what you think and if you like the video thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and I talk to you soon. Thanks, bye!